Quick update for the new Popgrass Studios Patreon before we start, which gives you access to all of my ink bundles and over 500 high resolution drawings from the history of the channel. But now on there, a day before a video is released, all of the high resolution art and inks from that episode will be up on the Patreon. Before I'd said they'd come out a day after the video is released, but that doesn't really make sense. You should get early access if you're supporting the channel on Patreon and helping make sure that the algorithm assuaging episodes aren't the dominant episodes I make on here. Making things like Multiverse Tales episodes episodes and more niche topics, easier for me to justify doing on here more regularly. And now we can get into the actual community redraw for this month. At the beginning of January, I made the topic for this month adorable, so my subscribers have been submitting their own adorable creatures and characters to fit into a new Multiverse Tales story, and today I'm redrawing five of my favorites into not-so-adorable versions of themselves. I'm also telling a new, kinda wacky, weird team-up Multiverse Tales story that honestly turned out even better than I thought it was going to be. I'll also show off the other stuff that was submitted, and I think I've run through the whole checklist of everything I need to say, so let's get into the episode, shall we? Oh, let's Hit like, if you want. Subscribe, if you feel like. But either way, enjoy the show. Hey shop gang, is anybody here? I'm bored and alone and I brought a bag of scones. You wanna do something with this? Benny Sharp yelled out through the base where his multiverse traversing allies met and worked out of. Many of them even lived there. And yet, there was no response. He started down the main hall to the living room across from the gym. Did the gopher finally turn on you all and kill everybody? Cause I'd be pretty bummed out, but I wouldn't be that surprised. Benny joked, but felt the twinge of actual anger and fear under his words. He was tensed and ready for Gooby, the ray gun slinging gopher, to leap out from behind a corner and try and kill Benny as he had half a dozen times before. The burrowing rodent had allegedly reformed and was now an ally to the group, along with somehow having become the overseer of a whole other world, but Benny didn't buy his moral switch. Benny reached the living room and glanced in cautiously. The TV was on, playing cartoons, but nobody was there. Alright, this feels like the part in the horror movie where either I turn around and see a ghost shooting by in the distance, or the lights go out on me. Benny whipped around dramatically. There was nothing behind him. The second he turned back, however, a short figure stood right before him, waving a small hand. Hello, Mr. Sharp. Gah! Benny said, leaping a step back and scaring the girl. Jeez, oh, kid, where the heck did you come from? Uh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to scare you. I, I guess I should have been less... Scary? I, I came up through the floor. You came up through the- Oh, oh right, sorry, you, you wanted the new kids on Sterling's B team, right? You got like, uh, phasing powers or something. Your name's Anna, yeah? Uh, Anna, y yes sir. I'm still working on my powers. I, I can go through walls and ceilings without help now. Most of the time. I was practicing when I heard you coming in. <laughs> no worries, kid. It just spooked me a little bit. It was a good scare, but uh... Where is everybody? Oh, I think I'm the only one here. Everybody else is out doing other things. Alexis, Kate, Mara, and Astra are training in another world. Gooby went to meet the armor lady's squirrel friend, I think. Sterling and Jake invited me to go on a dragon hunt with them and some of the others, and I thought I wanted to go, but then I didn't know if I was okay with helping them kill a dragon. But then they said it was a really bad dragon that was killing lots of people, and I wanted to help, but I also didn't know if I could help, and so I... Well, I didn't want to make them wait while I couldn't decide, so I just said I'd stay behind. Ah. Oh. Alright then, well if it's just you, then you get full pick of a scone selection. What you want here, kid? Benny said, tilting the bag of pastries open to her. Oh, wow, thank you. The chocolate chip one looks good, but, uh, but maybe I don't want something that sugary. That plain one looks okay, but I, I guess if I'm gonna eat something not super healthy, I should just eat the one I really want, or, or maybe I shouldn't have one at all, because I'm trying to eat healthier now that I'm training more and doing more superhero kind of stuff. That's a lot of thoughts on scone eating. Y you usually think this much before deciding on stuff? Despite her blue skin, Benny could see her blush purple. I... Uh, Sterling and Alexis are trying to help me with my, um, indecisiveness, but it's kinda hard. Hey, well maybe old Benny Shop can help you with that. Not like we got something more interesting to do. Suddenly an alarm started to blare, one that Benny recognized all too well. Uh oh, uh, how's your fighting, Anna? Cause we may got company. That sound means something just came through to this dimension without our say so. I, I can fight well. I decide stuff a lot faster when I'm fighting. Alright then, let's go take a look at what we got. 
Then he tapped a button on his wristwatch and it transformed into a mech arm gauntlet. On his eyes widened. Wow, that... did you make that? You better believe it. Got the idea from one of them uh, Iron Man movies. Robin Dummy Jables at her finest. Anna didn't know what that meant, but she nodded as if she did and followed Benny back to the main doors. The nexus point of this dimension, A016, was not far outside the building, so whatever came through was going to be close. They reached the door and Benny looked back at Anna. Ready, kid? You want some extra weaponry or something? Anna's eyes widened. D do you have another of the armor glove thingies? Uh, nah, sorry, and it's custom size too, so it probably wouldn't fit you. But I could give you this. He stuck his hand into the pocket of his fluorescent yellow pants and pulled out a Desert Eagle pistol. What? I don't need a gun. How did that even fit in your pocket? These pants can hold basically anything for some reason. I stole them from this green-faced goon in another dimension. Pretty weird guy, even by my standards. Had a face that could stretch like a rubber band. It, you stole someone's pants? Trust me, he ain't gonna miss him. Seemed like the kind of guy that preferred not wearing pants to me. Now, you sure you don't want the gun? She nodded vigorously. All right, suit yourself. He shoved it back into his pocket. Then he counted backwards from four and threw open the doors. Outside was not what either of them expected to see. Gooby the gopher was running towards them, dragging a lasso hooked around the waist of what looked like an armless cowboy. Chasing behind them was a furry salamander monster gnashing its teeth and trying to hurl the squirrel knight Zashitnik off its head as he stabbed at its skull with a little sword. I ain't got no idea what's happening here, but this feels like my kind of body. Benny started shooting globs of goop from his mech hand at the paws of the salamander beast. Its steps got slower as it looked at Benny and sneered. It lumbered closer to him. Benny thought it would slow much sooner, but it got within chomping distance. It swung its jaw down at him, but before Benny could dive out of the way, a small hand grabbed his arm. He glanced down to see Anna holding her breath, activating her phasing powers. The creature's jaw then bit right through them both, but made no physical contact. The creature snapped its jaw through them more and more, but had forgotten about Zashitnik. The squirrel on its head swung its blade and sliced off one of the creature's wobbly, feathered horns. It shrieked and thrust its head up. Zashitnik was hurled straight into the air and started falling down towards the beast's open mouth. Anna ran under the creature, crouched down then sprang up 15 feet, phasing through the creature's head to then snatch Zashitnik and phase him back down through the beast's mouth to the ground. Benny twisted a dial on his gauntlet, its slight glow changed colors, and he aimed up again. As the creature confusedly swung its head down, maw still open wide, Benny shot a bolt of flame right down its throat. It shrieked in pain and scrambled off, zigzagging towards the woods. Benny looked down at Anna with a wide grin. Dang, kid, those powers of yours is awesome. I tell you, the number of banks I would have robbed back in the day if I had powers like that. She scowled as she looked up at him. Y you would rob a bank? Yeah, yeah, chill out, kid. I'm a bit of a reformed goon myself. Bit of a shady past. Wouldn't do that kind of stuff nowadays. He then turned to Gooby with a scowl of his own. So what'd you get us into this time, you little rat? Then he got a better look at the armless cowboy, who he suddenly realized he recognized. He'd also assumed the man was unconscious, but his eyes were wide open and he had a big old grin on his face. He nodded and eagerly said to Benny, Howdy, Sharp. Long time. Dunno if we ever formally met a one-on-one -on -one like, you know, so I won't be too offended if you don't remember my name. Anna walked next to Benny, carrying Zashitnik. Who is that? What's going on here? His name is Harold, I'm pretty sure. He works for one of the main bad guys we've been fighting against for a while, Eloise Ludum. He helps her kidnap folks and creatures from other dimensions to fight in her fighting arenas against their will. They've taken folks from our group a few times, including me, twice. Beyond that, I can't explain nothing going on here. A clanging and tearing of metal suddenly rang across the yard. The group turned to see the doors of the sharp tank had been ripped off, and a red and white tail was scampering into the building. What in the float neck was that? Oh, uh, Green Bean, the salamander sore y'all were just getting acquainted with? He wasn't the only creature that came through that portal with us a few minutes ago. Think uh, four or five of those not-so-adorable contestants came too. Alright, Lone Ranger, I ain't totally sure how trustworthy you is, but given the fact that the gopher and squirrel ain't likely to get all chatty all of a sudden, I think I gotta ask you, what in the heck is going on here? You know, I've been trying to figure that out myself, but if these critters here are friends with y'all, then I think I might have pieced it together. 
See, I put the word out in my circles that I was looking for some not-so-adorable creatures for Ms. Ludum's next fighting arena. You know, things that can look cute, but can also fight like wild animals. You gotta entertain the crowd, you know? Then this cute little gopher right here comes to me and shows me that he's an overseer. And frankly, I did not know that a gopher could become an overseer. That was a delightful little surprise to me, so I might have gotten a bit too giddy when he offered me this here squirrel as a contestant. I said yes, so of course the gopher gets an invite to watch the fight. Five minutes into the contest, a bunch of the viewing platforms start exploding, the shields holding the contestants in go down. Next thing I know, I'm in the arena with a power suppressor strapped to my leg, which makes my arms disappear because I got these cool, powerful arms that can stretch out. That's not really the point. Just explaining why I'm missing my arms. But I find myself with no arms and a lasso wrapped around myself. The gopher then finds the squirrel and opens the portal out of there, but a whole bunch of critters chase on after us through the portal. Then we end up here, have that little fight with Green Bean, and, well, you basically know the rest because you lived it with us. Benny's eyes shot from Harold to Gooby. Gopher, did you plan a successful heist with Zashitnik to kidnap Eloise Ludum's right-hand man? Gooby nodded smugly while twirling his ray gun in his paw. Anna grinned widely. Gooby, th that's amazing! Though Benny still leered at the little creature skeptically. Anna then turned to the captive. But, I, I mean, Mr. Harold- Please, little lady, Mr. Harold was my father. I mean, not really. My father was a notorious warlord who sold me to Ms. Ludum when I was nine years old, but the point is you can just call me Harold. Hold the mister, please. Uh, oh, okay, that's really sad. But if you were just tricked and captured by Gooby, why do you seem so calm and nice? Well, it's all the same to me. I know Ms. Ludum will come and get me eventually and probably tear y'all into a thousand pieces for taking me in the first place, so I'll just enjoy the ride while I'm here. You all seem fun. Alright, look, let's put a pin in story time here. There's some weird creatures inside our base that we gotta go deal with. Then we can talk about the fact that the gopher here probably just brought down the full fury of that crazy Ludum lady on us. Gooby rolled his eyes at Benny. Harold helpfully leapt himself up and walked with the strange little group as they went inside to discover what kinds of not-so-adorable creatures were possibly tearing apart their home. Seconds after stepping inside, the lights went out. I got this wacky pants due to rescue. Benny pulled a comically large flashlight out of his pocket and handed it to Anna. The group walked through the halls, following the sound of scrambling claws and tearing packages coming from the kitchen. Benny switched his gauntlet to its goop setting, hoping whatever they saw could be stuck down easier than the salamander beast. Benny grumbled as he walked over his now trampled bag of scones. You know, you little rat, every bit of damage that these things do to this place is on you. And if they hurt, Anna was a sheet nick. Why are you so mean to Gooby, Mr. Sharp? Didn't he just help capture a dangerous villain? Little lady's got a point there, Sharp. Seems like the little critter was at least trying to do y'all a big favor by getting me here. The little rat has tried to kill me and my friends like ten times, and almost succeeded, mind you. Yeah, well, Alexis told me that you tried to drown him first. I mean, I don't think revenge is a good response, so maybe you kind of have a reason to not like him, but I also think you brought it on yourself a bit by doing that. N not that I think you deserve to die or anything, because I don't, but, but why did you try to drown Gooby in the first place? You tried to drown a gopher, Sharp? That's kind of cruel even by my standards, and I once put a bus full of children in a cage with a rabid gorilla. Oh, whoa, okay, those two things ain't even remotely comparable. Second, who even remembers why I done did it? I I'm a better person now anyway, it doesn't matter. But we gotta hush up, because we're at the kitchen now. They crept right up to the corner and heard the room being completely ravaged. Benny peeked his head around and saw through the dark a purple raccoon with a glowing multicolored tail with a hand at its end, devouring all the snacks from the pantry, tearing the cabinet doors from their hinges to get at the food. Lit by the open fridge was also a young woman with a mushroom hat and long green hair, smelling and tossing aside different condiments and jars, mumbling about how all these potions smelled vile. Benny was about ready to fire a sneaky blast at the raccoon when a loud buzzing suddenly circled around his head. A hornet hovered right in front of his face, then zipped into the kitchen over to the girl. It buzzed into her ear, and she whipped her head right over to Benny. Alright, sneak attack cancelled everybody, have at him! Benny leapt out and shot his globs at the girl, but she cartwheeled away from the fridge, and with the door closed, the room was much darker. The raccoon used its tail to pull out a rainbow-colored knife from nowhere, and it leapt at Benny. Anna grabbed him and the creature phased right through Benny to the ground next to Gooby. 
The gopher fired a blast from its ray gun, but the creature held its knife in front of its face and it blocked the blow, but was pushed backwards. Zashitnik then charges after it with its sword drawn. The two creatures dueled with their blades. After a few traded blows, the raccoon creature's right eye started to swirl. Zashitnik suddenly started to slow and nearly dropped his blade. The raccoon slashed its knife towards him, but was slammed in the head with the butt of Gooby's gun. Meanwhile, the girl was still leaping and dodging around Benny's goop blasts. Anna was trying to follow her with the flashlight, but wasn't keeping up well to the limber movements. Might have to come up with a new plan there, Sharp. Lily here is a right tough forest elf from Dimension I-418. Springy is all heck and she ain't even started using her magic yet. Oh, oh, no, there she goes with the magic. The girl's hands started to glow as she swirled them in a strange pattern, then reached out and grabbed her hornet from the air. She spoke in an elven language at first, then thrust her palm open and said, Mayhem. Her hornet multiplied into a thousand vicious insects with stingers aimed at the group. Okay, I'm thinking we probably should have come at this with a better plan, so let's get out of here. Benny, Anna, and Harold ran towards the door with thunderous buzzing getting louder and louder. Wait, Gooby and Zashitnik went the other way. We can regroup outside, they're probably going for the back exit. As they got close to the main doors, however, a snarling beast zipped into their path. Its nose glowed red and lit up bubbling steam that was spilling from its mouth. They just barely skidded to a halt in front of it when Anna grabbed both Benny and Harold and held her breath. They all suddenly phased through the floor and collapsed into the darkness on a stony ground beneath. Oh, oh, dang, that wasn't fun on the ankles, but good save, Anna. Where are we? Anna slowly aimed the flashlight around at what seemed like an unfinished basement. There were destroyed target mannequins and tables sprawled with books and papers. Sterling and Alexis used to train with the more dangerous parts of their powers down here, back when this place was a base for learning about and hunting supernatural stuff. It doesn't get used as much anymore. <gasps> oh, what was that? Something had flown right by Anna's beam of light. She tried to follow it, but couldn't see where it went. Oh, I know what that critter was. I'm keeping my eyes closed now. It darted past the light again, a yellow creature with horns and bat-like wings, but was gone again in an instant. Uh, why are you closing your eyes? Do we need to close eyes too? Because it's hard to fight something when you can't see. Not that we can see so good right now anyway. That there is a cute Mara from Dimension E597. It's a kind of chimera that always stays pretty young looking, and it's got a gorgon stare that'll paralyze you so it can kill you. Cute Mara, I, I swear, if I get killed by something called a cute Mara because of that little rat, I'm gonna- Anna's light finally landed on a creature flying a few feet ahead, staring right at her. No, kid, don't look at it! But she was staring straight into its eyes already. I- I'm fine, Mr. Sharp. Actually, I- I feel really nice. Harold's eyes shot open. Say what now? The creature fluttered its way over and purred as it kept staring at Anna. She held out her arms and it dropped down into them. She pet the creature, and it then looked into Benny's eyes next. Huh. Wow, I actually do feel real relaxed all of a sudden. You've got a weird definition of paralyze, Walker Texas Kid Killer. Huh. I know that species usually paralyzes folks. Maybe this one's defective or something makes y'all relaxed. Well now, I'm just glad that Ms. Ludum didn't get a chance to see that this thing ain't what I thought it was. Wouldn't have fared do well in the fight without that paralyzing power, I don't think. Anna kept petting the creature and looked up at Benny. Mr. Sharp, now that this little guy has calmed you down, can I ask you to please stop being so mean to Gooby? I don't know you that well, but everyone says you're usually really nice and funny, and you seemed like that before and until Gooby showed up. I know he tried to hurt you, but um, maybe it's not fair of me to ask. I don't know if- Benny sighed. Anna, look. It ain't just the gopher trying to kill me that makes me hate it. Th though that is a pretty good reason in my opinion, but yeah, fair enough, I did try to drown it first. But I'd done a lot of real bad stuff in my past, and for some reason, none of it ever came back to bite me in the butt now that I've become a better person. Except, of course, for that gopher. It's come back with a vengeance to not just hurt me, but folks that I care about. So even though maybe it's reformed or whatever, I... I guess the gopher is just a reminder that if that thing can come back to haunt me, what other things in my past might come back too? Not just to hurt me, but to hurt my friends. Oh, I... I guess that makes sense. But don't you trust yourself to handle those things if they do come back? Uh, what do you mean, kid? 
well, if you are a better person now, couldn't a better person make things right with people you might have hurt before? Or fix things you might have done wrong if they do come back? Plus, the people who know you now as a better person will probably be here to help you through that stuff, right? Maybe even Gooby if you start being nicer to him. Benny paused a moment and thought. It was a bit of a simplification, but she had a point. That is a pretty smart thing you just said there, kid. But if we're talking about trusting ourselves, what about you? You trust yourself to make decisions quick in a fight, and you make some real good ones. You saved the sheepnik, then you saved us, so why can't you use that same quick thinking when you're making not fighting related calls? I... I don't know. It's just easier when I know people are in real trouble. Well, not that I want you to act like you're always in life-threatening trouble, but how about the next time you come to a choice that you think you're gonna get real indecisive about, you just ask yourself, if you was in a fight and had to make this call quick, what would you do? Then go with that. Maybe it'll be the right call and maybe it won't, but you'll learn as you go, you know? She looked at the ground, then back at Benny, and nodded with a slightly hesitant grin. Come on, kid, that ain't a super confident response. I want a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, I can do it. Or my name isn't Anna Fens. That's what I like to... Hold up. Did you just say your name is on a fence? A fence. With, with a Z. You're a recovering, super indecisive person whose name is on a fence. Z fence. Fence. <laughs> Kid, you just jumped into my top 10 favorite names. I mean, it's no Grapefruit Melancholy the 16th, but it's pretty dang good. <laughs> Y'all are really getting me here. I'm laughing, I'm crying, you're learning from each other and growing as people. It's a beautiful thing. But could I interrupt and get a look in there real quick at that cute Mara? I want to see what it does to me, relaxation-wise. Then he stepped between Harold and the cute Mara. I don't know, how about we take it to look into the eyes of that gorilla that you traumatized by having it kill those kids? Bet that thing could use the relaxation more than you could. I did not anticipate you feeling more bad for the gorilla than those kids, but to be fair, the kids was being trained to be serial killers by my evil warlord father in Dimension H224, so that is actually kind of fair. Wait! Anna said eagerly. Mr. Er, er, I mean, just Harold, you know the dimension all of these creatures came from. If Gooby knew that, he could use his overseer powers to make portals and send them home, right? That is absolutely true, and sounds like you got a good plan brewing there, kid. With that, Benny, Anna, and Harold, with their new cute Mara friend, headed for the stairs to go save their rodent friends and their home. They all got upstairs and headed back towards the kitchen. There was nobody there, but when they were close, they started hearing the unmistakable sounds of distant ray gun fire. They ran after it until they reached the gym. The glass doors had been smashed open, and inside, Gooby and Zashitnik were back to back. The gopher firing blasts at the Balleratic elf, now twirling a bone sword in her hand, and the squirrel still clashing blades with the raccoon, which was now missing an eye. Well, at least it seems like the hornets is gone, but what about that? Before he could finish, Anna pointed to the corner of the room. Barely lit by blaster fire, there was a lean red and white dragon, with steam billowing from its mouth, stalking along the ground slowly towards the rodents. Oh, right, Colonel the Circus Dragon from Dimension C-354. That thing can spit some nasty boiling water that'll cook those critters alive. Without a word, Anna sprinted towards Gooby. She leapt into the fight and grabbed both Gooby and Zashitnik and held her breath, just as the dragon leapt forward towards them with its teeth gnashing. Anna even touched her foot to the raccoon so that it was phased as the dragon rolled through them all into a wall. Anna carried Gooby and Zashitnik out of there while the dragon got distracted trying to snatch the elf girl. Gooby, Harold is going to tell you what dimensions the creatures are from so you can make portals to send them all home, okay? Benny and I can lure them to it once you make them. Gooby nodded as Anna set him and Zashitnik down next to Benny and Harold. Harold told him the raccoon's info first, saying that it was called Candy from Dimension K920. Gooby tapped the glowing runes on his forearm, and as he did, Benny leaned down next to him. Look, Gopher, or Gooby, I guess. I'm sorry I tried to drown you, and that this apology is long overdue. And I'm sorry I wasn't believing that yous has actually changed. You might be looking for a second chance as much as I was a little while back. We got a messy history here, but I'll trust you to be a good guy from now on if you trust me to be one too. Deal? It glanced up at him just as the first portal opened. It stared skeptically for a moment, then grinned. 
deal. But my name is actually Archibald, by the way. I'm sorry, did you just talk? Perhaps, but nobody will ever believe you, Sharp. <laughs> what? Harold, you heard that, right? You heard the gopher talk? Harold grinned widely. A talking gopher, now that would be nutty, but I didn't hear a peep, he said, winking down at the little creature. Anna suddenly ran back over with Raccoon following her. Just before reaching the portal, she phased through the floor. The raccoon tried to skid to a halt, but Zashitnik leapt next to him, grabbed him, and shoved him through. Gooby closed the portal, and Harold told him the elf girl's information next. Benny shook off his astonishment at the gopher's response as Anna leapt back up through the floor to face the elf girl. Benny turned to the cute Mara, still flapping in the air next to them. You mind giving me a hand here, Simba? The creature landed down in Benny's arms, and he ran towards the elf girl himself, who was trying to slash her bone blade right into Anna. The slashes were phasing right through Anna, but she was clearly getting low on breath. Benny suddenly held out the cute Mara to be staring at the elf girl. She made eye contact with it, and suddenly her movements slowed. A calm smile came across her face. Look, lady, I don't know what your deal is, but I'm betting you got kidnapped from your world and is just trying to get home. See that portal over there? It goes back to your world. Probably not super close to your home in your world, to be fair, but at least you'll be in the right dimension. She looked over at it and seemed to recognize the landscape through the glowing purple ring. She nodded and ran to it, diving in with her hornet ally zipping along behind her. The only foe left in the building was the dragon, which lunged at Benny from behind, but Anna grabbed him and phased him through the attack. Anna took a deep pant of air, but the dragon quickly whipped around and spat a beam of boiling water at them. Anna quickly held her breath again, but the steam kept coming and coming. Benny could see she couldn't hold it much longer. Oh boy, this is gonna hurt. Benny held up his goop-shooting gauntlet, then tore his arm free from Anna, becoming tangible again. He dove aside but was still blasted with boiling water and yelped out in pain. He hit the ground and quickly fired a flurry of goop into the beast's mouth. Its maw was stuck shut, and the water stopped. Anna finally took a deep breath. Benny grabbed his shoulder, which felt like it had been flash-seared, and tried to ignore the pain as he thumped his feet and ran towards the portal, trying to lure the creature away from Anna. It snarled through its coated mouth and stomped along the ground after him. Gooby just finished opening the portal to its home when Benny got close. He leapt through it himself into a forest and ran around behind the portal. He panted anxiously, thinking it was entirely possible that the gopher would still close it and leave him there. But he had to try and trust Gooby. Or Archibald. The dragon lumbered through, sniffing the air, looking for Benny. Benny quickly darted back around the portal and leapt through it. All right, close it! The dragon whipped around, hearing his voice, and gnashed its teeth, but the purple light vanished, and the gateway was gone. After that, the group convened outside. They tracked down the salamander creature and sent it home as well, then said final goodbyes and thank yous to the cute Mara, before returning it to its world. Well, I guess we just gotta deal with you then, huh? Benny said, turning to Harold. And frankly, I have no idea what we're gonna do with yous. That's a fair conundrum you got there. I don't know what I'd do myself if I were in your fluorescent yellow pants. But could we eat something while we're thinking? I'm getting right peckish over here. Well, I do like the sound of that. I could even grab us some more scones. I'm still craving scones. Could even get one for you, Archibald. Anna looked at Benny confused. Uh, who's Archibald, Benny? Never mind, kid. I, I meant Gooby. Anyway, what flavors y'all want? Huh? Anna? Scone? Oh, um, I don't, let me, I, I think, chocolate. I want a chocolate scone, Benny. That right there is a great decision, Anna. Good job. You tried to drown a gopher, Sharp? That's cruel even by my standards, and I once put a bus full of children in a cage with a rabbit grill. <laughs> But could I interrupt real quick and get a good stare at that cute Mara? How about we give it to that poor gorilla that you traumatized? <laughs> Betty, I thought you changed. How about we give it to that poor gorilla that... <laughs> poor gorilla. <laughs> but was slammed in the head with the butt of Zashitnik's gun. But was slammed in the head with the butt of Goopy's gun. But was slammed in the head with the butt of. But was slammed in the head with the butt of Goopy's. Goopy! Not Goopy! <laughs> Dude. I am very happy with how this came together, and to be honest, this story was originally kind of a throwaway story, but the more I worked on it, the more I was like, oh wow, this. 
I actually really like how this is coming together, and it feels like one of the better multiverse tales, in my opinion. Anyway, before we get into next month's redraw prompt, I want to say a huge thank you, as always, to everybody who submitted, as well as a massive thank you to the people who were chosen for this episode. Archie Allen, KitKat Vlogs, at I Draw Random Art on Instagram, The Forging Wolf, and Clara Spens. And rolling into next month's prompt, your submissions are actually going to fit into a storyline that I mentioned offhand in this episode, which is that some of the Multiverse Tales boys went on a dragon hunt. So what I want you all to send in for the next month is a very violent and vicious creature that would fit into Taryn's universe that they might come into contact with while on this hunt. I will need one very violent, vicious dragon as their end goal that they're trying to get to and ultimately hunt, but the creatures don't all have to be that. They can be other beasts that they come across in the hunt for their main target. And instead of getting people to submit two poses for the character as I usually do, since I, I realize that I don't really like drawing the same character in two different poses, instead what I want you to do is submit one drawing of the creature and then what a fantasy armor would look like made from that creature. If someone submits some really cool armor, I might consider using their armor for the redraw instead of using the creature, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Anyway, I'm very excited to see what you all submit. I've got a fun little story mapped out for this episode. And besides that, that's all for today, except of course for ending this video on some kind of positive or inspiring note. And the thought I want to leave people with today is a quote from Jay Shetty, who says that you don't have to take something that was true at one time and make it true for all time. Even if there's something that you don't like about yourself right now, don't convince yourself that you're going to be stuck like that forever. We have massive capacity to make changes within ourselves and in our surroundings. You will have to put in work for it, but you are never stuck being someone that you don't want to be forever. I hope that's inspiring to someone out there. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next episode on Monday. Goodbye.